last, my hearties. It's time for pale news. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Welcome to Pay Your News. Sorry about the uh, pirate business, but it is Talk Like a Pirate Day today and couldn't let it pass without having a little bit of fun. Now, our first story is slightly depressing. It's quite a sad bit of news, but it's, well, in, in a way. And it's from China, and that, the news is that Chinese state officials, the State Council, have issued new regulations on the collection and protection of paleontological specimens which unfortunately forbids the removal of un unidentified fossils from China and also, unfortunately, forces all loans of identified specimens, that's those that have had uh, publications done and have been described, have to be agreed by the government, which means that a lot of paleontology is going to go a lot slower, especially as all of the really new, really interesting stuff seems to be coming out of China at the moment. And this, this regulation covers uh, plants and animals, and both body and trace fossils, so there's, there is, it's everything, it covers everything coming out of China. The regulation also entitles the Chinese government to trace and reclaim illegally exported fossils, which is fair enough, after all, if they've been illegally exported, then they shouldn't have been, and they should go back. But worryingly, worryingly though, this regulation also states that fossils are not, to, not allowed to be sold, exchanged, given away, or pledged to foreigners or foreign-owned organisations, which includes museums. So it looks like China is going to be keeping all of its cards very close to its chest for the near future. Personally, I hope this, this ruling can be worked around. I'm sure it will be, and as... <laughs> Some Chinese scientists have said your local Chinaman can probably get around them fairly easily. Anyway, that's the bad news out of the way. Now on to a couple of stories which are slightly less political, shall we say. <sighs> okay, our second story today comes from northern Spain via the journal Nature and regards the discovery of a new theropod dinosaur called Concavenator corcovatus. Uh, was found in a lower Cretaceous, that's early Cretaceous, conservation Lagerstat. Now Lagerstat is a fossil deposit which shows extremely well preserved fossils with soft body parts, integuments, which is feathers and so on. Um, and other examples of this are the Burgess Shale from the, the Cambrian and the Poseidon Schiefer from Germany, I can't remember the age. I think it's also Cretaceous. Anyway, this dinosaur was six metres long, approximately, and it was a member of the Carcharodontosaurs, which includes, I think, the group that gave rise to Tyrannosaurs, Albertosaurs, Allosaurs, and so on and so forth. All the big theropod dinosaurs that you, you think of when you think theropod dinosaur. Um, it was discovered by scientists from the Spanish National University of Distance Learning, which I'm, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce in Spanish, and shows two very distinctive, very interesting features. The first of which is what has caught everyone's attention is the hump, which essentially is the dorsal extension of two of the vertebrae in in the well, two of the vertebrae in the middle of the back, which if you like, if you imagine having two of your vertebrae sticking out of your back and the, result, the resultant hypothesis is that the dinosaur had a hump as, can prompt, as you will see around the internet where all, the, all of the articles have covered this story. And the second and for me more interesting feature is small bumps on the forearm on the older bone, which is one of these here which are analogous to the attachment points for feathers in modern birds. And whilst in the past we've had lots of dinosaurs now, from China especially, where the integument, the, the feathers and the skin, have been preserved to such an extent that you, the, we know that there are dinosaurs with feathers. Most of these have come from the mid to late, the late Cretaceous. Whereas now we've got one from the early Cretaceous or the lower Cretaceous. And if the scientists are correct in these bumps being 
analogous to attachment points, then it means that there's a far greater period of time allowed for the evolution of feathers in theropod dinosaurs, which for some people was causing a bit of a problem in that it happened very quickly in the late Cretaceous. So now we've got lots more time in which these feathers to evolve. Okay, our final story today is just a small fun one. Uh, it is the discovery of a, a fossilised whale, three million year old fossilised whale, at San Diego Zoo, or more accurately underneath San Diego Zoo, the San Diego Zoo, when construction workers began work on a new project for the zoological park, they discovered fragments of a whale, bo whale boat, and uh, the Natural History Museum of San Diego was called in, and they are currently excavating. And unfortunately, um, it hasn't been identified yet, but I will link to the articles where I got this from below, so you can go and have a look and see what's going on. Okay, have a nice day, I hope you've enjoyed the show, and see you in two weeks.